Good morning everybody, Victor here from the beautiful Sportfish Panama Island Lodge. We are 20 miles off the coast of Panama on this remote island. We are about to embark on an epic fishing adventure. First goal is to target the giant yellowfin tuna, which they have plenty of off the Panama coast. So we'll see you guys offshore. Alright, so every day we're going to take this little rowboat out to the big boat and it's all part of the adventure right here. See you later. Alright guys, welcome to Panama. So the first thing we're doing on our trip is we got a little half day today and Shane has a big rock formation out here that he likes to come to where the swell breaks. It says a lot of big rooster fish come by, so. So we've made casts at two of these kind of structures now. One kind of just a rock formation and this little island right here, pretty cool. We got a bunch of frigates flying by. But the problem with rooster fish is they could just be cruising. They'll come in for an hour, they might go out. So you kind of just got to intercept them when they're coming through, kind of just waiting. Gonna keep circling this island, maybe go hit up a few different areas. Hopefully put a rooster in the boat. Oh, that's a sick bite. Oh, Hell yeah. yeah! You guys, I just got smoked on the popper. I don't know if it's a jack or rooster, right but we gotta go back here. So I saw something come up the first time, popped it like three more times and then it came back for it. Pretty decent, feels like it's got some shoulders on them. Big old tail beats right there. We almost gave up on the spot. Shane said, let's try this rock right up here a little bit. And it produced, man, it produced. I want to say it was a jack. I didn't see its uh, fins. Hey, it's the first fish on our trip. That's it. Right, Shane? Nice job. It's not the rooster we wanted, but these guys pull up, put up a hell of a fight. And uh, the hardest fighting inshore species right here, Jack Gravel. See ya. Brixie's caught two rooster fish so far. We got some jacks on board. The thing I like most about traveling to countries like this is just seeing all the different geographies. You guys see every little rock is different, all these little formations. Very different from Florida. We don't have elevation, you know? That's the one thing I like about Central America is you got elevation, you got mountains, and it's just so green. With all this rain comes a lot of green. So we just fished a few hours inshore. Berkey caught those two beautiful rooster fish. We headed back to the lodge. We had a delicious dinner, rested up, and we're ready to hit it hard the next day. So our search for yellowfin tuna has begun. A little bit ago, we pulled up to a commercial boat and a big popular thing to do around here is trade the commercial fishermen some beer or sodas for a flat of sardines where we can use as chum for the elephants. Uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get in front of the way the, 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 the porpoises are moving. We're trying to get in front of the pot of porpoises and then put our baits down. You know, put the chunks in front of them, get that scent in the water and, they, and then they'll come to our bait. Or, you know, pitch a live bait. While we're doing that, then, you know, you guys could be ca casting the the Yosuri poppers or stick baits. Yeah, baby. Yeah, they see them all behind us here. Brooke. Yes. See them all. So we're throwing a lot of plugs, but up in the front of the boat, and that's kind of the main goal is to get one to eat a plug because, I mean, those bites are epic, but the fish kind of staying down at the moment, so you try to get up in front of the porpoise that look like they're headed in a meaningful direction and moving quick, sink some chunks down underneath the porpoise, and there's some big tunas underneath there sometimes, so decent fish. Nice. 
All right, guys, first tune in the boat. Me and Chris were up top casting the poppers and one of the bait rods got hit. Okay. 50, 60 pound fish caught in like five minutes. That's gonna be a good taste in one. None of that lactic acid built up. Such a beautiful fish. Good boy. Okay. Nice one. Two and a half page on it. I won't turn this down. This is some hectic fishing, guys. Every few minutes, we just change our spots, reposition ourselves along these dolphin and tuna because they're always moving and they're following that commercial boat too as they chunk. See how the corpses are all the swirling right here? Yep. That's where all the tunas are right here. I don't know where these birds are. So I just pitch a live bait right in the center of all that action and boom, it got eight. So me and Chris, our main goal, we want to get a fish on a popper. You guys know me, I'm an artificial lure connoisseur. And I want to see that yellowfin come up and smoke my popper. But we have live baits and dead baits out every single time, which they keep getting hit a lot more. It's really tough to get one on the popper because you got to be like right in the middle of the action. And these fish just move so much. It's incredible. If you guys don't come here for the fish, I mean, you got spinner dolphin and so much life all around you. It's absolutely beautiful. Victor is back here hooked, hooked up. up on a yellow. Brooke, filming. I see why you want to move to Panama. This fishery is incredible. They get some of the biggest yellowfin tuna in the world and very consistently. Shane says pretty much year round. Watch that line. Watch that rock. I can't see it. So, I was throwing the mag dive, we hooked some fish on bait, but the porpoise were doing a circle, just right on top of each other, doing a circle right there. And you had to know that's where the bait was. All of a sudden, the entire yellowfin school popped up. I had my plug in there, new plug, and with that amount of fish that came in, it was an instant bite. So this tuna, they're notorious pinwheel. They make that first run and then they'll just turn sideways and they'll do this down there and just do big circles underneath the boat. And that's where the battle begins. Hooking them is one thing. Getting them to the boat is another. And on a spinning reel, not the best leverage. That mag dive. Got it. On the mag dive, there we go. There was a hundred fish there. Yeah. Uh, now I know why people don't do this on the yep. yep. oh, I told you. You didn't see me go get it, did you? Oh my gosh, it's huge! Yeah, I'm gonna film slow motion. We get, we get Chris on the guest gaff. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> you guys, I've never been so defeated in my life. I feel like the biggest little baby butt. I don't recommend fighting giant tuna on the spinning reel. Not on a circle hook. Not on a circle hook. That's not IGFA rules. Ah, I don't care about no IGFA. <laughs> Come on back here, yeah. man. Come on back here a little bit. Don't let that line touch that moment, whatever you do. No, you're good. Sorry. Don't bring that right up too high. Um, Carlos, grab the other guy. 45 you got a shot, take it. Oh my gosh, Mick. Oh, that's a nice one. Yeah, that's a nice one. Yeah, that's a Fish close here. Yeah, Chris on the guest gaff. Oh, barely got it. No good, no good. No good. No good. No good. Okay. You can you see, see them gray out like that when they get stunned. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Take out the gaff. Nice fish. Nice fish. Oh, nice fish. Holy smoke. See, now I don't feel so bad. I, 
I was, I'm not gonna lie, you guys can roast me in the comments. That was the worst fish fight of my life. I can't tell you how many times I thought I was gonna lose it. Giant yellowfin tuna at Sportfish Panama Island Lodge. Okay, he feels about 90. He's a big, big boy. This fish has been on my bucket list for a very long time. Huge shout out to Captain Shane, Sportfish Panama Island Lodge. Bucket list fish. If you guys want to get on these, check them out. I'm going to have them linked below. Stud tuna in the boat. I don't even think it's 10 a.m. I'm having the time of my life. Huge shout out to the crew. Chunky yellowfin right here. Guys, watch how fast Carlos plays up this tuna. Yeah. He is a surgeon on the night. on the bank, kill this guy, get one here. Third fish for you, Chris? Yep, one on the mag dive, one on the popper. First fish was on conventional. It's a lot more fun on the popper though. That bite was sick, bro. Tail out, it was a uh, pretty epic bite. I've been throwing, there's so many porpoise and so much bait. And it, you know, finally just get that one explosion. All it takes is one fish to come up from 50, 60 feet down. Cause they see that popper, all that commotion. I mean, sometimes when they don't even want to come up and eat a live bait, they'll come up to eat that popper because that popper just calls them up. Something about that action, they can't stand it. But when you're tuna popping, don't get overexcited and get real fast with it. You're not catching Jack Carvels. Catching tunas, let it sit in between pops. Hard pop, they see it. They hear it, they look up, it's got that silhouette just bobbing, boom, and that's when you get bit. We actually had two baits in the water while he caught that fish. And it's just like you said, something about that action, it just produces a different noise that I think they've never really heard before, and they got to investigate it. Tuna got those big eyeballs, they're usually down deep, and they torpedo on the way up and just, before they even know what they ate, they got a popper in their mouth. Draft up again, baby. Woo. Oh yeah, there it is. Identical to my last one. So Brooke just landed her fish. Chris is still fighting this one on the spinner up front. Yeah, no joke. There it is. That's the uh, mustad demon circle. Yeah, great job guys. Thank you. Got a double baby. It was really refreshing to see how well these guys took care of the fish. Within minutes of catching them, they were cleaned, bagged up, and hit the ice. Uh. 
All right, guys, I'm out here with head chef Eddie. He's gonna cook up some uh, tuna for us. We got non-stick surface. Oh, baby, look at that. Tuna sticks. Fresh tuna. Put some salt on it. Leave it olive oil. Pepper. Oh yeah, baby. You only cook it three minutes total. Well, but it's not like both sides, like, right? Like, but it's like, oh, uh, you know, people like that medium rare. You can start seeing how it starts going right. So start cooking the stuff, and you can see that like, you can imagine the marks coming up. Mm -hmm. Then you just think of flipping it. You know, a good part. You have a more hot, like, you know, surface. You get darker, more. Well, we can wait to talk. It's good, boys. Mm. This is the secret right here, right? Some garlic butter. You have a little, a little of uh, turmeric. This border, that's why it's... Oh, that's why it gets that nice color. Yeah, that, that's why you got that like orange or yellowish color. Okay, for tonight, guys, we have some dorado, mahi-mahi, fried dorado, with some tartar sauce. We got some fresh cut tuna, kind of big tuna. I have to cut the steaks, you know. And then we have some lasagna, pretty good lasagna with Italian sausage and meat. We're in garlic butter. Bill, got it, eh. garlic bread. And then some to tomatoes and avocado salad with some dressing. Eddie, gracias. Thank you so much, my You're friend. You're welcome. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for visiting us. Yeah. Come well, back. Well, Bring more friends. Come back next year for sure. Nice. All right, guys. So one of the things I love about lodges like this is you get to meet a bunch of cool people from all around the world. We weren't the only ones staying at the lodge. We got a group from Florida actually here. How are you guys liking it? Oh, fantastic. It. Doesn't get any better than this. No? Best place, come every year. Yep. Every year, the fish is fishing great. And you guys saw, I posted in the video, these are the ones who got that 200 pound tuna right here. <laughs> yes, indeed. You felt these every two. pound. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Getting old for that, but we'll do it again tomorrow. We'll try again. <laughs> All right, enjoy. Thank okay, you. thank you. Cheers, everyone. Oh, I was good. Salud. 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 Great trip, man. Big thanks to this guy right here. Thanks to Shane. You're welcome. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. This is only one of three videos that I filmed at the lodge, so don't worry, there's gonna be more. Looking back at my time at the lodge, I can honestly tell you this is one of my favorite trips I've ever taken. Nothing at the lodge misses a beat, from the food to the service to the captain to the mate. I mean, all their gear is top notch. The food was incredible. Chef Eddie prepared different food every single night. Top shelf liquor, all inclusive. If you guys are looking for the trip of a lifetime, it is worth every single penny. The fishing is world class. You are gonna have the time of your lives. Seriously, check out Sportfish Panama Island Lodge, linked in the description box below. Check them out in the description box below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.